Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you all for attending today's webinar. My name is Craig Dunkel from the Department of Health and Aged Care, and I'll be co-hosting the event today with my colleague Andrew Dunbar and Iggy Pentado from Settlement Services International. I'd like to begin today uh, with an acknowledgement of country. Uh, we acknowledge the traditional owners on whose land we meet today. We pay our respects to their elders past and present. I acknowledge that many of you are meeting from across different parts of Australia. There will be an opportunity today to post questions throughout the session via the Slido question submission box on your screen at the bottom, if you just click on the app button and we'll prioritize questions behind the scenes and post the ones we're responding to on your screen. There is also a link in the chat if you can't find Slido. Uh, questions sent through in advance during the registration process have also been considered for the Q&A session. There is no option for attendees to turn on their video or microphone. However, the session will be recorded and uploaded onto our website along with the slides. I'll just pass over to Andrew to start off the presentation. Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'll just start with the agenda. If we could just go to slide number two, that would be great, thanks. Um, first of all, we're just providing an introduction of the program, uh, its aims, uh, and how it can benefit your organisation. Uh, you'll then hear from our New South Wales and ACT grant recipient, Settlement Services International, on what they are doing to attract, train and retain new personal care workers to the home care sector. SSI will be represented by Iggy Pintado, as Craig just alluded to, who's head of the Home Care Workforce Support Program. Uh, we'll then, they'll look at case studies um, from their particular work that they're undertaking, or from, whether that be from providers or participants, about experiences within the program. And then we'll be a Q&A Q session at the end. We encourage all of you to ask questions um, you may have about the program. Now, the program itself, the Home Care Workforce Support Program aims to grow the workforce, the personal care workforce, uh, by up to 13,000 new workers by helping you guys as employers to attract, train and retain new and existing workers into the aged care sector. Uh, we have six organisations or consortium that were chosen to deliver services under the program nationally. They are Council on the Ageing uh, and their consortium partners in Queensland, Settlement Services International for the ACT New South Wales, Age and Community Care Providers Association with their consortium partners in Victoria and Tasmania, North Metro TAFE and their consortium partners in Western Australia, Apprenticeship Careers Australia for South Australia and the Northern Territory, and the National Aboriginal and Community Controlled Health Organisation uh, providing services to rural and remote communities in Queensland, Northern Territory, South Australia and Western Australia. These organisations will provide support to home care providers with activities to attract and recruit new personal care workers to the sector, as well as helping with capacity building so your existing staff can supervise and train them on the job. Key tasks include promotional activities to raise awareness of career opportunities in the sector, screening potential candidates for the right skills and attributes and getting candidates work ready through the provision of pre-employment training. They'll also support new personal care workers to complete high quality training, including facilitating access to subsidies to support training and supporting work placement opportunities and providing outreach services to new starters. We've also engaged Health Consult to undertake an ongoing evaluation of activities under the program. And part of this includes surveys of personal care workers and home care providers. Um, the first survey went out in April 2022 and a new one for this year, roughly 12 months into the program has just gone live. We'd love to get your feedback and we'll circulate links as part of a follow up to uh, all the emails that are registered under this program. And also just another reminder um, that when you close down the webinar, you'll be prompted to give to, to complete a short survey as part of the webinar process by our department's webinar team. All feedback would be much appreciated. So if you get an opportunity, please complete that. I'll hand it over to Craig. Thanks, Andy. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Iggy, 
um, from Settlement Services Australia. Um, so Iggy Pintado is an experienced executive leader who has held senior management in executive positions across Australia and New Zealand and in Asia Pacific in commercial and not-for-profit organisations. His direct experience in the aged care sector as the former CEO of Omnicare Alliance in the mid-north coast of New South Wales. And he's the head of the Home Care Workforce Support Program, New South Wales and ACT at Settlement Services International. So I'll now welcome Iggy and hand it over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Craig. Um, I hope you can all see my presentation. I first of all wanted to thank the Department of Health and Aged Care for their support of the program in New South Wales and in the ACT, um, specifically Craig, Andrew, Rihanna, and, and the rest of the team there. Um, it's been fantastic um, being part of the program. And uh, I really wanted to tell you what we're doing um, in New South Wales and the ACT. So you can save, see from our opening slide there, we've got a theme called making a difference with every door you open. And I guess this is our differentiator in the marketplace, which is that we're not just recruiting, attracting and recruiting people. We're also making sure that we retain them by not just making this a job, but actually making it a career um, uh, a career uh, option. Um, SSI would like to acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first Australians and traditional custodians of this, where we live, learn and work. And we pay respect to elders past, present and future and recognise their continuous connection. Um, SSI as an organisation, for those of you who are not familiar with, with the organisation, is actually Settlement Services International. We were established in 2011. We are a community organization and social business that supports newcomers, migrants and refugees, and other Australians to achieve their full potential. Um, we currently employ about 800 people. Uh, we have 180 bilingual guides, and we also have about 300 volunteers. And our vision for the organization is to achieve a society that values diversity of its people, and actively provide support to ensure meaningful social and economic participation, specifically in vulnerable communities. I wanted to start off with, again, as I mentioned, making a difference with every door that you open with this very short one minute video that kind of summarizes our approach in terms of attracting and recruiting folks into the sector. So I'll play the video now. Hey, Daryl. Hi, Farisa. I've got them. Hey, girl. Hi. How are you? It's good. Your lips? No. What's been happening? Oh, uh, not much, but I can't get it right there. How are we going? Good. That's good. You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. And not a hair out of place. I just want to play some music. Turn this on. Yes! <laughs> Good! What do you think? That's it. That's the song. I love that song. Make a difference with every door you open. Become part of the Home Care Workforce Support Program with SSI. So I'm sure you'll agree that um, it's uh, it kind of tugs to the heartstrings, but it makes sure that people understand the importance of the work that is being done um, by home care, uh, by the home care workforce um, in, in, in all parts of, of society, I guess. From a program delivery perspective, as, as Craig and Andrew have already mentioned, we are one of six providers contracted to deliver the Home Care Workforce Support Program on behalf of the Department of Health and Aged Care uh, as part of our, our grant. Um, we will deliver the program in New South Wales and ACT from 2022 to 2024. The intended outcomes of the program on the right-hand side of this slide says that we are going to grow the Home Care Workforce by 527 new personal care workers each quarter, um, which is a total of 4,400 over the contract term. 
Now that comes with its challenges in a very tight labor market, but um, we're confident that we can get up to those numbers um, as, as we are in this particular quarter. Uh, the new personal care workers have the skills and support required to provide quality aged care services. Our experience has been that um, the, the mix of people that work in the home care sector is a mixture of people who aren't necessarily qualified as in certified to, to work in the industry. So we have got a specific focus on making sure that we encourage and promote um, certification in certificate three in individual support and certificate four in age. We're also tasked with improving the links between the relevant industry stakeholders to facilitate this attraction and training of new personal care workers to the home care sector. And that means working with registered training organizations and most of the folks on this call who are the home care um, providers as well. And um, we, we, we've started that process. We started about nine months ago through regional forums and, and, and other ways of, of engaging you. And we will continue to do so in the, um, in the months to come. When I'm asked how we actually do this, this is kind of the slide that we, we share with, with everybody. Um, again, like every other provider, our job is to attract, register, train, recruit, and support workers all the way up to making sure that we retain them. So from the left-hand side of the slide, we've been very active in terms of using all the attraction techniques that we can. Um, social media has been very um, uh, successful for us. Advertising, word of mouth, PR, our website, our apps. Well, we've got youth programs. We have stakeholder meetings and other events that, that, that we're running to, to basically fill the pipeline, if you like, of um, people who are interested in working in this particular sector. We then go through a registration process um, in building a database of participants where we screen them, we assess them, and we onboard them. And we put them into different categories around those who are new to the workforce and who need qualifications, those who are already qualified and who are seeking work, those who are currently employed but actually need qualifications, and those who are employed and need to upskill at the same time. So we get them to a stage of readiness where we're ready to refer them to either be trained, where we place them with an RTO, or we recruit them or both um, and, and make sure that they're available to home care providers in their particular area and region um, to, to commence work. Um, we also have, I guess, the, the differentiator in our program is the retention piece. So we do provide um, regular check-ins um, with uh, all the participants, uh, we do that in the first day of their job, in the first week, in the first month, and then three, six, nine, 12 months after they start. So we're constantly checking in with their progress, whether they're studying or whether they're employed. We are also offering post-employment services, which is mentoring and peer support as a way of actually retaining them in, in the sector to make sure they are supported um, across their role and across their, their, their their work at the same time. As folks, we've got lots of experience in um, cultural and, and uh, diverse languages. We do training for home care providers, uh, the senior staff and the boards. So please um, avail yourselves to that training, um, especially in communities of, of, of uh, diverse cultures. Um, our geographical reach, as we've said, is New South Wales and the ACT. Um, we have conducted regional forums up and down the coast and also uh, to the west, um, but we are kind of focusing on making sure that we at least have representation in each of the areas in New England, the north coast, the central west, the central coast, Riverina, Elawar and Shoalhaven, and southern and eastern tablelands, which is what we've kind of been doing with the regional forums. And for our um, colleagues in the ACT, um, we are working very actively with um, community jobs providers in the ACT, and we're about to make an announcement about an agency arrangement that we will have there with an organization um, very shortly. Um, who are we looking for? Who are our target audiences, I guess? Well, our strength is in the migrants and multicultural communities, so we're going with, with that particular cohort first. We are engaging with multicultural communities um, across uh, starting off in, in the Sydney area, but then also expanding. 
We are also focused on First Nations people. We're looking for career changes, people who um, kind of want, are looking for their, their next career role and want to right size, if you like, in their careers. Um, mature employees. Uh, we do want to focus on school leavers, students and youth who are looking for another career option um, apart from the, 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 the normal ones. We're also looking at return to work parents and also volunteers, uh, volunteers specifically those that already look after Mrs. Miller next door on a volunteer level, but who now want to be certified and want to get paid for the, for the fabulous work that they do. What have we done so far since July 2022 to December 2022? Well, we've got a website, ssi.org.au slash home care, where we are um, accepting um, leads and participants who are interested in the program, or you can call a 1-800 number for those who are not tech savvy. Um, we have also, um, again, really focused our campaigns around embarking on a meaningful career, um, which is more about working on life-changing work, meaningful career, flexible work hours, and steady jobs into the future. We have also um, been very uh, present in social media, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram. Uh, we also had some articles printed in HK News and Community Care Review around that theme of home care being not just a job, but a profession. Um, you've seen our videos on, or at least one video on YouTube, uh, which again has been very well accepted. And I guess the proof point, if you like, for a meaningful career is that we have um, now established a home care career roadmap. Um, early in the piece, I did a uh, bit of research around whether there a home care career roadmap actually existed. And to be honest, I couldn't find one. So we've actually created this one with the help of some of our stakeholder partners where um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, where we try and um, build a little path that says, well, you start off as a personal career worker and you can stay in home care through administration, through care coordination, through home care. But it's also a great stepping stone for a career in nursing, occupational therapy, allied health, et cetera, in terms of getting into the, the care sector. Some of our upcoming programs, and we're very, very excited about some of these, and um, Andy mentioned about uh, the case study. I guess the case study is that we're right in the middle of get, seeking input and feedback from all our stakeholders, um, specifically participants um, and also some of the home care providers. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of the programs that we've got going. So one of the first pieces of feedback we got was where, what kind of marketing campaign do we need to work and where do we get our leads from? And I can tell you that um, around 80 to 90% of our leads all come from um, Facebook and Instagram through what's called Meta. Um, and it's mostly people who are for women who are over the age of 35. So a lot of our campaign and a lot of our advertising is really focused on the social space. Um, but we're also getting quite a few leads from the regional forums, uh, from word of mouth, and and also just from um, different different uh, people who know in direct um, uh, communities such as multicultural communities and the and the um, job community areas. We last week launched a home care traineeship. Um, this was something that again feedback from participants and also from home care providers who said there isn't really a traineeship as such in home care. And so we have partnered with Apprenticeship Careers Australia and we have just launched the first home care traineeship program in New South Wales. Um, this basically means that people who qualify for this program, whether you want full-time or part-time work, and you complete the first four modules of a certificate three in individual support, will actually be placed in the program uh, complimentary, by the way, have their certificate three individual support paid for and be placed for 12 months into an eligible home care provider. So all of this is done for you. You just need to register for the program and, uh, and we will uh, do the rest through our partnership with Apprenticeship Careers Australia. We see this as a vital part of the program because it not only opens up a career for those who um, choose to work here, but it also provides them the training, it provides them the work, 
and retains them because they've got to do this program for 12 months to be eligible for the traineeship. We also listened to the home care providers who told us about how they're using casual labour. Um, with the um, number of roles that are available out there and, and I guess not having enough people out there to do the work, which is why we have this program, we took some advice on casual labour hire and we are just about to announce a program with Hira, for those of you who know Hira, um, where we will be subsidising um, the casual labour that you would get from a higher up. Higher up are renowned for having workers who are already work in the disability space and in the residential space, uh, residential aged care space. So we're just extending their program to home care. And as I said, if um, if you want to be part of that program, uh, please contact us and we would um, love to tell you more about that as soon as we, we launch that into the market in the next week or so. I already talked about multicultural community again, um, speaking to um, specific home care providers who cater for those communities. So Sidwest Multicultural Services, um, we have started working with them and focusing on three or four communities that they already have relationships with to help promote the program. Specifically, we're going to focus on the Arabic community in the west of Sydney, but we will expand that to other um, cultural groups as well in terms of their relationships. I mentioned what we're doing in the ACT. Um, we have conducted regional forums and we've had quite a few um, uh, leads and participants already come from the ACT. But what we're about to announce very shortly, again in the next couple of weeks, is that we are going to partner with um, Migrant and Refugee Settlement Services, or MARS. Um, they are based in the ACT. They already have a presence in the multicultural um, uh, communities down there with migrants and refugees. So they will be acting on our behalf in the ACT, our feet on the ground, if you like, um, to make sure that um, we've got a presence, if you like, in the, in the, in the ACT um, area and that we are part of the communities and part of the attraction of participants in the ACT. We are also going to open a home care experience center uh, very shortly. Um, this is for um, people who want some of the soft skills around, um, around home care work, um, specifically how to deal with and how to talk to the elderly. Um, also looking at those who need some digital literacy um, work and also those that need first aid. So we will be opening that home care experience center around about April timeframe. It will be in the suburb of Bankstown, but we're also designing it so that it is quite mobile so that we can take a lot of the, some of the courses and some of the, the capabilities um, around uh, New South Wales and the ACT. Um, I talked about retention. We talked to, again, a lot of our stakeholders around what do we need to retain workers? And some of the ideas that, um, that they came up with, I already mentioned digital literacy, um, helping them with resumes, career roadmaps, multicultural training, um, even transport support is something we're looking at. And we've put, put it all into a program called Wraparound Services. So as soon as you come into the program as a participant, um, we will offer you these different wraparound services to allow you to um, progress not only in your job, but also with training um, and also with the retention of, of yourself as a participant in the program. And there's an exciting um, uh, initiative we are finalising with the NRMA, for those of you who know the NRMA, um, uh, around their Blue Membership Program to basically uh, give membership to participants to basically just lower the cost of their living for them. So discounts on petrol, insurance, movie tickets, events, accommodation, etc., as part of their program. So keep an eye out for that particular program because participant, that'll be the kind of little incentive we give participants to, uh, to be part of our program. We do have regional forums planned um, again in all the major regional areas from March to June of 2023. So look out for those, they'll be on the website. And again, just to keep us um, on the right track, we do have an external strategic reference group, um, representatives from home care providers, 
um, and other sectors who are kind of steering us in the right direction in terms of the programs that we've got going out there um, and, and, um, and and trying to get that traction, if you like, in the within the sector. So what does the Home Care Workforce Support Program offer you, the home care providers? Well, why are we doing this? We're doing it to grow the number of uh, workers. We're also doing it to upskill those who, who aren't qualified. And we're also looking to enable the aged care workforce to make sure that they have the skills and the um, and the and the training required to actually go and do their jobs. What we do is we vet, we call it pre-screen them before we refer them to you as home care providers. Um, we are also going to provide, as I mentioned, the casual labour hire support um, through that backfilling subsidy program. And we're also doing our bit in terms of staff retention. Um, we know that as home care providers, you have enough to do on a daily basis. Um, we can help you with retaining those folks in not only in the sector, but in your, your particular organizations. Um, what else do you get? You get an allocated business relationship lead. And I wanted to make sure that when you interact with us, you don't just interact with an email address we are, I'd like to introduce you to Kamal and to Jose. Kamal on the left, Jose on the right. Um, they're two individuals who are specifically going to be allocated to your accounts um, and to work with you to help you with growing, skilling and enabling your uh, workforce and engaging you with our programs. How to get started? You can confirm your eligibility as an approved home care provider, first of all, through, um, through, through um, by contacting us. And if you want to be involved in participant referrals, um, you need to sign a deed of collaboration with us to make sure that we're, um, we're kind of working together on this. Um, I'm going to pause there for a minute, and this is the engagement part of, of the presentation. If you'd like to take your mobile phone or mobile device out and um, scan that QR code, um, that will take you straight to your email and be able to send us an email on homecare at ssi.org.au. To, um, to register yourself if you aren't already in our program. So uh, I'll wait maybe five seconds for those of you to do that. And, um, and you know, again, you may as well act now because now's the time to, to engage with us in this program. Okay, I'll move on. Um, from a testimonial perspective, we've been working already with some providers and um, Catholic Healthcare uh, have been a great partner of ours already. Um, we spoke to Anna Wallace, who's a senior recruitment partner, and you can see her testimonial there. Um, about halfway through is where I get excited, which is not just providing um, uh, candidates to her from diverse life and work backgrounds, but they're blown away by the quality of the candidates that are coming through as well, because we do screen them for their motivation and their genuine interest in a role that involves helping others in the community. And as I said, we're also screening them for the long term. So constantly reinforcing the fact that this is not just a job, it is a, um, it's a long-term play um, and a career. Um, I wanted to just finish up with two more things. One is, again, just expand on the home care career roadmap. Um, as I mentioned, there, one did not exist, so we're very proud of about putting together uh, a home care career roadmap uh, in the age space. Um, again, making sure that people understand that personal care work is the beginning of the journey, um, and very, you know, being very um, straight, I guess, about what's involved in that work. But then looking at um, other options around administration and scheduling, care coordination and home care management, which is still in the sector and still supporting um, senior Australians, but in, in more of an indirect capacity. I mean, this will open the door to other career pathways, um, nursing, occupational health, allied health, being a counsellor, paramedic, a um, number of different things that you can do. And we already have um, one particular um, home care provider who is, is going to become our, our real case study, um, who started off as a personal care worker 20 years ago and is now the CEO of the organisation. So um, it's a little bit extended beyond this career roadmap, 
but there is a career roadmap for a very fruitful and um, and meaningful career, if you like, in this space. Um, I will pause again there for a minute. If you'd like to scan the QR code, that will take you straight to www.ssi.org.au slash home care, um, where you can find out more about the programs that I've spoken about and more about the career roadmap. It is available for download on the site if you would like a copy. Um, or again, you can just contact us and we will send you one. With that, I wanted to say thank you again to the Department of Health and Aged Care for their support of SSI in our journey. Um, we will continue to talk about a meaningful career in home care and about some of the key benefits of actually working in home care. We are aware that it is a um, minimum wage role. Um, but we're also aware that there are a lot of other benefits around flexibility, around um, life-changing work, and around some of the other benefits that I mentioned uh, as part of the programs that we're launching, such as wraparound services, um, membership services through the NRMA, um, and other things that we have um, in plan. So with that, I will hand back to um, Craig and Andy. Thank you very much, Iggy. I um, will start going through the slider. So if you have questions, please send them through and we can start ticking them off, whether they're for um, either Craig or Iggy to answer. So if we get Iggy back up on stage, that would be great. Um, the first question I actually have is probably a double barrel one. There's two of them there, which are, are quite similar and probably really useful as far as this. Um, they are, what examples do you have about good practice onboarding of new entrants into home care services and then how to compete in a tight labour market other than hourly rate? So what, I guess what have you been learning to date as part of this uh, program, Iggy, and is, uh, is there anything that you think would be really valuable to our providers out there in this space? Absolutely. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, look, what we've found in our experience is, first of all, from an onboarding perspective, I have to say speed is of the essence. Um, we have had situations and we've learned from situations where we have had people who are interested um, and we've kind of let them go for a couple of days before actually contacting them again. Um, we have learned very, very clearly that as soon as we get their interest, we must contact them within four hours if we are to maintain that interest. So I put to you that speed to, um, first of all, get them into the program is important. Um, we also now have streamlined our, pro our program so that we get them from registered to converted to referral in the space of days, right? There's some, there's some work we have to do in terms of screening, but it's now one or two days before we actually refer them to a home care provider. So um, I guess my advice for home care providers is that I guess uh, there's no easy way of saying this, but you need to do your bit because as soon as we refer them to you, it's first in best rest, and you need to make sure that you conduct um, your interviews, your reference checks, your offers as quickly as possible, because when we refer people to home care providers, we refer them to two or three in their area so that they do um, have a choice about who they wanna work with. So that's the onboarding side. On the tight labor market side, um, I did mention that um, it is uh, very tight for us. And as, as I said, speed is important. But on the other side, we are getting some feedback about the work and what's involved in the work and putting together, not really talking about, uh, I mean, apart from the salary, but also looking at the extended benefits. Um, in talking to participants, they're those successful ones, very interested in the flexibility. They work the hours that they, they want to work. Also very interested in the autonomy, which is um, selling them on the fact that you don't have a boss looking over your shoulder while you are looking after Mrs. Miller. Um, it's really working with Mrs. Miller and, 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 and making sure that um, you work at your pace and you really understand the client. Um, and also the, the, the fact that it is so fulfilling a role. When you do leave the role after three hours, you know that you've actually helped somebody. Um, and as I said, the other thing that we're doing is trying to make sure that we incorporate the quality training into the program. So if you're not trained, we will provide you with that 
with that training in some way, shape or form, whether it's non-accredited or accredited training. And also trying to give, um, as I mentioned with uh, the NRMA membership piece, um, looking at other ways that you could reduce the cost of living. So with the NRMA, they will give discounts on uh, petrol, on insurance, on uh, car parts, um, event, uh, events, movie tickets, etc. So the things that you would normally pay full price for um, will actually be discounted in once you become a member of the program. And if you join our program in New South Wales, um, that membership will be complimentary. So again, trying to find ways of um, encouraging people um, to, to, to join a sector that, you know, at the moment um, gives you flexibility and is, is more than just the base pay. Um, and at the same time, also promoting the fact that it'll be base pay while you start, but then as you stay in the sector, um, obviously your salary is, 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 is potentially more than that. We have a question here about the labour hire that you alluded to. Um, are they technically an employee of our companies or do they pay SSI? Do you have any information on those particular arrangements that are worth sharing here? Yeah, look, uh, we're, we're still finalising the, um, the, the the contract, but the way it will work is that you will, um, like any casual labour, like most casual labour hires, for those of you who have dealt with hire up, they will remain a um, employee of hire up as a casual labourer. Um, but instead of paying, as an example, seventy dollars um, an hour for casual labour, um, if they are a participant in our program and they're registered with our program and that we've provided them with the screening. Um, we will subsidise that by up to 50%. So, um, yes, unfortunately, they, well, they still stay an employee of, uh, of, of HIRA, but um, they are available like any casual labour hire company at a reduced rate if they are part of our program. Thanks, Iggy. Um, this one probably goes to Craig and Iggy, but what's the minimum qualification a home care provider would like to see their workers have? I'll let you go first, Craig. Uh, look, I think our experience um, at a national level is that um, most home care providers are wanting to see like the Cert 3 in individual support, uh, but that does vary across providers um, and particularly in, I guess, their own requirements and the type of work being undertaken. So Iggy can probably give some more practical advice on, on what he's seeing in this space. Sure. Um, look, it's um, it's it's very interesting because again, there are a lot of organisations that we've worked with who have been very specific about the minimum requirements, and the minimum requirements are quite simply um, right to work in Australia, a police check, um, working with children in New South Wales, working with the vulnerable in the ACT, um, fully vaccinated, um, and a driver's license, a car, and comprehensive insurance. That's kind of where we've got to at the moment, and that's what we're working with. However, having said that, I also think that a lot are also asking for Cert 3, um, an accreditation at least in uh, the aged care space, Cert 3 in individual support, or a Cert 4 in, in, in aged as well. However, having said all that, because of the desperation of um, work required, I've also seen some home care providers who have actually relaxed that uh, those, those uh, the, the Cert 3 requirement in particular and will work more towards practical experience. So as an example, um, we've, we have, for example, some migrants and some refugees who have got rights to work in Australia who in their uh, previous countries were either nurses or, um, or doctors even. Um, not recognize qualifications not recognized in Australia. Um, we will put those people forward to home care providers and they usually get snapped up. So if they've got some level of experience in the care space, um, I know of some home care providers who will um, take the punt on them and, and, and put them on board while they're getting their certification. Thank you, Iggy. Will the traineeship model be available in the ACT and where do we sign up to be an eligible workplace? Um, right now, uh, we're still, we're, we've launched it in New South Wales. Um, we are going to uh, look at the ACT as the next, um, next space. 
but right now I can tell you that it's just available for New South Wales, not for the ACT. If you are a participant, um, you can um, uh, register for it now just through our website, just by filling in a registration form. If you are a home care provider, I strongly recommend you get in touch with us and uh, we will pass your details on to Apprenticeship Careers Australia, who basically look at um, the arrangements from the point of job placement. Thanks, Iggy. We've got a question about the processes here. Who determines where potential employees work? And also, are there any guarantees that aged care providers will have access to employees over major agencies? Um, first of all, I'll answer the first question first. We obviously look at a match, so we do a matching process. Um, we do use postcodes and, um, and regional codes to make sure that we are matching people where they actually live. Um, the other thing that I mentioned is that as a home care provider, we're encouraging people to sign a deed of collaboration with us so that we know that they're interested in the program and they know that once they get um, participants referred to them, that they will adhere to making sure that they take them through a process, as I said, in a, in a speedy manner as much as possible. Um, so we do have criteria or a matching process that looks at who we need to work through. Now, we are trying to be as fair as possible, not just the majors, but the mediums and the, and the, and the minors. So I encourage all of the home care providers out there to please sign deeds of collaboration with us so that we can register you. And we will make sure that if we have candidates who are ready to be referred to you, we will do that. Thank you, Iggy. Um, someone's just asked, what the definition of a home care provider is. So I just thought I will address that now. It's currently someone who provides home care packages, but that is under consideration as to whether other care types might might fit into that. So no decisions been made yet, but I would encourage people to watch this space actively and see what, what happens there over the coming weeks and months. Um, thanks for that other answer, Iggy. What additional support is coming for regional providers who are experiencing low referrals? Uh, again, we're uh, we, we're only working as as quickly as we can from a, from the point of leads perspective. So I think the the key one there is going to be the regional forums. So we ran regional forums uh, uh, last year, and they were really for the home care providers and for the um, registered training organisations and for the community job folks. The regional forums that we're running from March to June will be participant recruitment drives, working with the job folks. So we will be looking at um, at you know promoting the programs that we have in the region so that we can pass them on to the home care providers as soon as they register their interest with us. Thank you, Iggy. And then for one last question. So if you've got anything, don't leave it on the table, please make sure you send it through. Um, we, you know, if we can't answer it today, we'll take it on notice. So yeah, better to ask than not everybody out there in the ether. Um, the last one that I've got so far is, is there any training available for existing workers to upskill and help retain staff? Um, at this point in time, we're kind of looking at non-accredited training and accredited training. So with um, non-accredited training, um, uh, again, the Department of Health has recommended that there is an online course through the University of Tasmania called EQUIP, Again, if you're interested in doing those courses, they're, um, they're currently complimentary. Um, more than happy to, to pass that information on to you. It's very much a primer in terms of getting started in the aged care space. So that's, that's what we're using and encouraging people from a pre-boarding perspective. From an accredited perspective, um, we are looking at smart and skilled, but there isn't necessarily anything in our program for people who are already employed in the sector. Um, again, we can pass you on to registered training organisations who would be interested in training your people. But right now, this is basically for new participants in the program to make sure they're equipped and, and, and ready to enter the workforce um, with accredited quality training. Thanks, Iggy. On that, um, just regarding the equip modules, um, there's a whole range of topics under there that might be relevant to your, your organisational staff, including dementia care, palliative and end of life care, trauma informed care, wound management, cross-cultural awareness, oral health, 
mental health and wellbeing and falls management. Um, as Iggy mentioned, it's available free of charge to aged care workers, volunteers, caregivers who are just supporting loved ones and anyone with an interest in improving care for older adults. Uh, the program launched in October 2022 and content will be rolled out progressively. Um, those All those modules will be available from May 2023 at the website www.equiplearning.utas.edu.au and we will make sure that that email link goes out as part of the follow-up to everyone on this. So we would like to keep in touch. So we'll make sure that that's included in that. Um, we've got another question that's come through. Some organisations operate in both disability and aged care and share their support workers across both. Are the staff in this program strict, strictly limited to home care pr package provision? Provision. Sorry. Under the terms and conditions of the of the contract, um, we are specifically focused on home care. So we would um, take participants in um, who um, are going to be employed or are going to be trained in the home care space. Um, again, where they end up is really up to the organisation, but we are very, very much focused on the home care workforce and making sure that we recruit and retain and train people for home care specifically. Thanks very much, Iggy. And it's got another question about the equipped chat. We'll, we'll send that out as a follow-up to everybody, um, I promise, and we'll circulate both slides. So if there's no further questions, just give this 30 seconds or so just to make sure. Otherwise, we'll give everyone a little bit of their afternoon back. Thank you very much, Iggy and Craig.